Hello, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar from Annex B and Avery Dennison with the title How RAIN RFID Can Enable Smarter Vehicle Manufacturing. First of all, I would like to introduce you to our speakers. Lauri Hüttinen, Business Development at Avery Dennison and Mahdi Mekic, Marketing Director at NXP. My name is Daniela Burgstaller. I'm a Marketing Communications Manager at NXP, and I will guide you through our session today. Before we start with our webinar, just a few organizational points. Today's webinar is scheduled for one hour, and we have time for Q&A at the end of our presentations. So if you have any questions or comments during the webinar, please type them into the questions box, which you will find in your GoToWebinar control panel. The webinar itself is being recorded and a link to the recording will be shared with all attendees afterwards. Well, that was all from my side for now, and I'm handing over to our first speaker, Mahdi. The stage is yours. Thank you, Daniela, for the kind introduction. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody from my side as well. To begin with, a few words on um, NXP. As a company, we are a um, manufacturer of uh, semiconductors with focus on a number of specific industries such as automotive and industrial manufacturing, but also mobile communication and communication infrastructure, as well as smart home and a smart city. The world as we see it is a world in which everything is connected to everything else via many different communication technologies. And um, many of these uh, things are also nowadays smart. They have a certain intelligence inside. And in the world in which everything has inherent intelligence is, commu is communicating to everything else, we also need to ensure that, that communication and connections between these smart devices are secure. So our focus is on providing and enabling secure connections in uh, this very smart world in which we live in. In terms of numbers, we operate in more than 30 countries worldwide uh, and have close to 30,000 employees including a revenue of about um, 9 billion uh, US dollars. We have a very long history um, coming all the way back to uh, Philips, uh, which we were born from and have um, R&D team of nine engineers, 9,000 engineers, sorry, and about 9,000 different patent families. Now to the topic of today's webinar, Let's start with defining what we mean by um, smart manufacturing or industry 4.0. Um, this term refers to uh, the fourth industrial revolution, which we are witnessing today. The first revolution was coming from mechanization and introduction of a water power or steam power. Uh, the revolution in uh, manufacturing after that was um, assembly line enabled by uh, electricity and enabling mass production. Afterwards came the revolution in which computers and automation was introduced with uh, various kinds of robotics. And nowadays we're witnessing what we call cyber physical systems. Uh, so not only is there computation meaning uh, intelligence and automation, but also all of these uh, robots are communicating with each other and also communicating even with the objects on which they work on or which they produce. Now, the second term that is important for us to define would be uh, RAIN RFID. Now, RFID uh, in general should be a well-known uh, term, and there are many different kinds of RFID, from active RFID based on batteries, working with batteries, but also passive RFID that takes its energy from the field, uh, RF field it, it finds itself in. When we talk about passive RFID, there are also many different types of RFIDs there from low frequency to high frequency, all the way to ultra high uh, frequency. 
So what is it that uh, is specific about RAID RFID and what we mean by it? So RAID RFID is a passive wireless technology that has a read range of several meters and very importantly, ability to read in bulk, so many item, items at once. Already today, it is deployed in many different industries and connects billions of everyday items directly to the internet. What it enables is um, identification, location, authentication, and engagement with those items, basically making them uh, smart and allowing us to do all of these things with them. And in essence, it also makes data drop down from the cloud like the rain uh, drops into the sea. It's also one of the reasons why the name RAIN RFID. And in a RAIN RFID system, normally you will have some kind of item uh, that a, an RFID tag is attached to. Then the item with the RFID tag interacts with RFID readers. And those readers normally either run directly certain software applications on them and then are connected to the cloud or to the back network. In other words, um, RAIN RFID is also a, a commercial name for a, a technology that, that is behind. But normally, uh, we do not um, speak in technology terms such as here what's mentioned EPC Global Gen 2 version 2 or ISO 18000-6. Um, the commercial name that was selected for this kind of technology is, as mentioned, RAIN RFID. Now, how does RAIN RFID and Industry 4.0, how do they fit together? So, first of all, it enables everything in the industrial manufacturing space to be connected to everything else, whether we're talking about parts, components, uh, containers that carry those parts or components, tools that are used in manufacturing, or even finished products after they have been completely assembled and ready to be shipped to the customers. The benefits that are coming from this connectivity of all of these devices is enhanced life, uh, life cycle management. It also allows uh, for higher uh, transparency in the supply chain. It makes our factories smarter, and uh, it also makes the processes in those factories more efficient and convenient, and overall, it improves user experience and the services that we can offer. In other words, it is the uh, digitation, sorry, digitalization of simple things, which enables the next generation of cyber physical systems. Now, RAIN RFID components, they come in many different form factors. Um, the tags, starting with them as the key component of the system, come in the form of, for example, paper label um, that can be attached to an item or to an object. They also come in the form of hard tags that are that can be either glued or screw uh, or attached with screws uh, to uh, those objects. Normally used in harsher environments and environments in which you can expect certain shock and, and bumping into each other from, from various objects. But they also can be, uh, in um, specific cases, integrated as parts of the PCBs that go into electronics. The readers, on the other hand, also come in various different um, forms, form factors and shapes and, and formats. We have um, mobile Bluetooth-enabled devices that will uh, use the Bluetooth uh, connectivity to couple with any smart, um, smart tablet or smartphone. We also have uh, handheld readers that um, are that have a bit more power, a bit more read range than the small mobile Bluetooth devices. And then there are also stationary gate solutions that allow you to drive a forklift uh, through that gate with a pallet uh, and many boxes on that on the pallet. And lastly, on the software side, there are certain application software that can run directly on the um, embedded computer on the reader itself. There's enterprise software in the background that connects many readers to each other. And then, of course, you can do a number of LN analytics in the cloud. Now, the story of RAIN RFID in any system starts also with a, um, 
and the microchip that it gets embedded inside the label or hard tag. And here we also have multiple categories of products to look at. If an application requires simple, basic identification of an object for track and trace purposes, and not more, not more than that, then the features that are uh, required would be a unique serial pre-programmed uh, number, and of course, a high uh, contactless uh, performance. There are a number of different um, uh, ICs, microchips that NXP provides, which enable this kind of use case, but the latest and um, latest product in the family, it would be a UCOD 8. If the application requires enhanced intelligence, for dynamic interaction with the tag, where you want to um, program some additional data up above and beyond the unique serial number, if you want to flexibly change that data later on by reprogramming it, etc., then the features that would be required in your IC would be higher user memory, for example, uh, uh, up to 2 kbit, as well as higher EPC memory, up to 448 bits. And again, there are a number of different products in this category that can be used and selected. The latest um, in this in the latest generation of this type of product would be our UCode 7XM. And lastly, if the application requires also secure authentication for establishing full trust, especially for um, safety critical components or other high value items that get built into product, the features that are required are also then crypto authentication with the crypto keys that offer additionally a, a user memory that is also protected so it can be hidden and can be and the data that is in there gets communicated only in an encrypted manner. Here again there are more products in the category but the key offering would be product called UCOD DNA. With that, I would like to hand over to my colleague to continue on introducing Avery Denison and their part of the presentation. Laurie. Thanks, Mahdi. Thank you very much for your good presentation. So my name is Lauri Hytinen. I have worked in the RFID industry for over 13 years. Lately, as a head of global sensor market development at SmartRack Technology. SmartRack Technology is nowadays part of Every Denison, and at Every Denison, I will um, take responsibilities of our automotive business development. And now let's try to move to the next, next slide. Good, so a couple words about Avery Denison to, to move forward. So at Avery Denison, we are in the business of unlocking new possibilities by opening our eyes and minds. We are an enabler that trees through the entire smart supply chain from source to home. We intend on inspiring and building through our partnerships a better tomorrow. At Avery Denison, we recognize that there are problems in the world where technology has the potential to solve them. To this end, we consider ourselves a solutions enabler, where we don't believe in the technology for the sake of it, but in the technologies for everyone's sake. Technology and invention for us is about creating new possibilities with a clear sense of purpose. To fix and improve things, to create a world that can be better connected, better harmonized, and more in sync. I think every Denison is not familiar to all our participants today. So here are a couple of key figures of the company. So we are a global material science and manufacturing company, specialized in the design and manufacture of wide variety of label and functional materials. 
Our headquarter is in Glendale, California. We have operations in over 50 countries. Uh, employees, we have over 30,000, and sales at last year was bit over $7 billion. And we have one of the Fortune 500 companies. But that was about the company itself. And now we can move to our main topic today, which is automotive. So today's talking points, we have how Brain RFID serves the entire product life cycle, makes component, component supply efficient and secure, how Brain RFID upgrades your manufacturing to become smart, enables smart logistics, and makes after-sales services convenient and fast. All in all, Brain RFID drives the cost down and efficiency up. So why RFID in automotive? OEMs, automotive manufacturers, they want to optimize all processes in the supply chain. They want to have coordinated collaboration with suppliers and service providers based on harmonized and reliable standards. They want to, to capture, store, and exchange information concerning transport means, packaging, transport units, and goods on the very the logistic destinations. They also want to assure quality of critical parts. OEMs needs uh, technology for planning and control of physical flows, protecting genuine parts against counterfeiting and quarantine safety by controlling the critical items. So what are the key challenges in automotive where RFID can help? The biggest challenge is the limited transparency of the supply chain. Industry needs full visibility for component supply chain from the component manufacturing all the way to the car assembly line. This means automated shipping notices and full traceability for components for in case there are some recall processes needed. Just in last weeks, we have heard about new recalls of millions of vehicles, and this needs to stop. Automotive industry has just don't afford uh, these cases anymore. Another important or another challenge is there is incom incomplete control of manufacturing process. We need to ensure that right components and tools are in right location at right time. No one should need to stop their production lines anymore due to missing components. One big benefit of RFID is also that it works where optical codes are failing, for example, at the paint shop lines. Counterfeiting and quality diversion of aftermarket parts and components is getting bigger and bigger issue for the industry. As Mahdi told earlier, RFID offers unique ID which cannot be changed. It can be attached or embedded visibly or visibly to a component and it can be work as a part of a component. Bulk reading is, a, is of course a huge advantage of RFID, but lately we have also seen growing interest for NFC applications where smartphones are used as a reading device. So what is Avery Denison's role in this industry? We want to understand the use case. We want to work with OEMs and tier ones, tier twos, to find the best suitable products for different applications. We want to support system integrators and solution providers to qualify new use cases. Of course, for us, it's very important that we have up-to-date product portfolio. We want to have cutting edge products always available. I also encourage you to contact me or someone from our field organization if you feel that you are not able to find a suitable transponder 
for your project or your for your application. We also want to support our converting and tier suppliers of how to convert, handle, and bundle RFID with current materials. So every Denison, our only target is to ensure frictionless adoption for RFID applications in automotive industry. That was generic about the, our position and what, what are the needs. Now we can move forward with automotive use cases. First, I will speak, we speak about the part and component management. Then we move to manufacturing excellence, distribution and quality control. Then about our new automotive leakage detection. And the last topic will be the RFID tire tacking. So parts and component management. This is the fastest growing business area for RFID in automotive. So all components at, at cars are marked already with RFID in a separated projects. Bumpers, seats, airbags, engines, gearboxes, you name it. We have worked with all of those and we are happy to support you with those. RFID offers a great visibility for the component manufacturing and supply chain. It will start from the raw materials, the component manufacturing, car assembly line, and all the way to the end users. Recycling is also an interesting topic and how we can improve component recycling in the future by sharing information of the used materials with the recycling company will be, will be getting more and more important. Today's automotive applications are quite often closed loop. It means that, that it's focused on the production logistic applications in special tier one or on the OEM side. Products, products are encoded Position, labels are positioned and transponder types are defined by these independent companies. Now we are moving forward with that and we, we see larger and larger applications which are quite often now driven with the OEMs but which are combining the industry together. Information will be shared between the companies in the whole supply chain. We need to be able to track and trace critical parts from the raw materials all the way to the car dealers or even to the end users. To be able to do that, we need to work together. RFID offers great visibility and at the end of the day, it improves vehicle's quality. RFID is widely implemented by European OEMs. All German OEMs, for example, are using RFID today. One important point there is the VDA association, which is led by Jörg Walter. They have had huge influence to that. Here you can find some of the VDA standards or recommendations, how they call those, which offers you great information of the different applications. There are many standards available globally. And from our point of view, it's crucial that new projects will define which standards they are following. In the future, there are always RFID transponders around you. So even for the closed loop applications, you should always follow certain standards to make sure reliable applications. So smart track is now part of Avery Denison, and I'm excited about that. Avery Denison has an outstanding material knowledge. We are delivering adhesives and label materials to automotive industry already. We have specialized teams 
to support our partners, how to test and qualify materials, and how, how different label structures are working in challenging environments. So today, every dense label materials are used for interior, exterior, and also under hood applications. Marking batteries, engine blocks, seats, tires, airbags, cables, cable harnesses, you name it. This offers us a great foundation to bundle our knowledge for new applications and to support our partners. So if you are planning to tag safety equipment or components which needs specialized qualification, we have experts to support you. As mentioned earlier, part and component management is the fastest growing RFID application area in automotive. Every day and together with our experienced partners, we are actively supporting OEMs and tier ones and tier twos to find the best suitable products for their needs. We have extensive fit organization to support you. And we are proud of how we handle the challenging first half of 2020. For us, customer service and product availability are very important topics. And that's also something that we are very proud of. From the internet, you can find a few very, very interesting success stories. For example, Daimler has published a video of the mirror identification application. Rehau is stacking bumpers with our short title, and Durkov has built a nice logistic solution for Faurasia. To summarize it, RFID offers great possibilities for to optimize track and trace solutions for critical automotive components. It offers full visibility for the whole supply chain, from the raw materials until the vehicle distribution, or even beyond that if needed. RFID helps to avoid counterfeiting and delivering material information together with the components, and that will enable new applications in the future. So here are a few products which we often recommend to use for parts and components. For plastic parts, we often recommend our short dipole belt or miniweb product, or from Avery Denison side, 373 with UCOT 7XM. We also have a huge portfolio for on metal products. So metal, metal applications, we have a Skyline, which is a high performing printable on metal label. Midas FlagTag, on the other hand, also offers a great performance with a lower cost. At Every Denison, we also offer all kinds of transponders, all frequencies, all form factors, whatever you need. So also we have our hard tags available for component tagging when needed. For example, Maxwell Bond and iDisk families are offering great performance and reliable reliability for you. From the Avery Denison side, we also have a great thin on metal label called AD456 with UCO8. To move forward with the automotive applications, this is where we started over 10 years ago manufacturing excellence. Many paint shop and body shop lines in Europe are running with our transponders. We have our own portfolio of high temperature inlays and hard tags to ensure, ensure superb reliability for this application. Also, we can offer all our RAIN RFID products with high temperature substrates. Typical temperature in the paint shop line is around 200 degrees C. It depends about the car body material, if it's the steel or aluminum, what is the maximum temperature. From the hard tech side, we have 
products for car body identification and also for skids. For skids, we have de developed Matura case, which can survive up to 1,000 heat cycles. For car bodies, we have Maxtra turtle, which can be attached for the car body before paint shop line, and if it offers identification all the way from the body shop through the paint shop assembly lines all the way to the car dealer. Unfortunately, there are not too many success stories publicly available, but if you are interested, I highly recommend to check uh, Audi Nekasulm application from the internet. Here, RFID offers a real-time visibility for OEM's production, full traceability, and automated identification, also for warehouse applications. On the right-hand side, the first product, by what you can see, is our Polo image, so Dipole. This product is normally converted with Nomex layers by our experienced converting partners. As mentioned earlier, also our dog bone and belt, for example, are available with high temperature poloimide substrate. The product in the middle is Maxtura uh, case for car body, uh, for skid identification. And on the below, we have Maxtura turtle for car bodies. Next application is the logistic and quality control. Here, RAIN RFID is a standard technology for the logistic application. It offers fully automated applications, real-time visibility for every step in the supply chain. Automated shipping notices are enable, enabling companies to offer better services without additional efforts. Our products are offering great read, read distance for all logistic and quality control applications. Volkswagen Group has optimized its logistics and services with RFID. I would recommend to check how Audi is handling the uh, vehicle identification and Seat the vehicle logistics. Also, Porsche has published the prototype tracking application, which is very, very interesting to check and there are lots of lots of good solutions around it. Logistic and quality control applications normally requires longer reach range. So for that for that reason we normally recommend bit larger products long, products with larger footprint. For example frog and dog bone. Also from the Avery Denison side we have a AD 63 and 65, which are offering great performance. Moving forward to next application area, which is our automotive leakage detection. This has created lots of interest during the last years. Sensor Tadpole is our specialized product for the application. It's a fully passive water sensor. It means that there's no battery, there's no additional components to that. So the product structure is similar with, with our standard on metal labels. It can be inserted directly on a car body under insulations and carpets. And the sensor value can be read through, uh, with, read through windows without opening any doors or trunks. Normal sensors are read before and after the shower tunnel. We save and compare the sensor values. And based on that, we can reliably recognize any leakages from the car. Our partners have finalized solutions available. So at the moment, there's no start to need long-term development projects anymore. Picture from the right-hand side. You can also recognize our special tail, which is absorbing water from wider area to the sensor. And this helps us to re reduce the number of sensors for the applications. 
SmartTrack has published also a YouTube video of the application, which explains the benefits and the use case very, very detailed if you are interested about it. Our last application area is the tire tacking. We expect tire tacking to grow rapidly in the following years. Target application is normally traceability for tire logistics or identification over the tire lifetime. ISO standardization and new legislation in Asia will speed up this application area shortly. We recommend our Dogbone or new AD8600 product for logistic applications. We also have hardtack available, which can be embedded inside tire rubber. It can be offered with a primer and overcoat if needed, and it's it's tested with the tire manufacturer to survive manufacturing processes and offer identification over the tire's whole lifetime. Now we are moving to the Q&A. So thank you very much from my side, and I'm handing over to Daniela. Great, many thanks um, to you, Lauri and Marti, for your presentations. So as mentioned by Lauri, we will um, open up for our Q&A session shortly. So if you have any questions to the presenters, please type them into the questions box, which you will find um, in your GoToWebinar control panel. We have already received some questions during the presentation. So let's have a look at the first one. Um, I think this one is for you, Mahdi. So the question was, can a RAIN RFID tag be attached to any kind of component or are there any limitations, for example, when it comes to temperature or um, using it on a metal surface, for example? So the answer to the question is that there are, of course, many different uh, types of tags, as we have also tried to outline here in our presentation. And um, as long as we know the environment in which the tag is going to be used in, uh, there are measures that can be taken uh, during tag design and tag manufacturing to um, adjust it and, and to prepare it for that environment. So if you were to take a general purpose tag uh, and attach it to an un RF unfriendly material such as metal, you may have a problem. Uh, if you take, again, a general purpose tag and you put it in a high temperature environment, again, you may have a problem, not may, you will more than likely have a problem. Uh, but that's why, as I said, uh, if we know that a particular tag will be work, be, will be attached in a, a, to a metallic in, uh, environment or to a other type of um, materials that need to be taken into account, uh, or the, it, it, it will be exposed to certain mechanical shock, or it will be exposed to high temperature, these are all the things that are taken into account, and then a specific high temperature tag, hard tag for shock um, uh, tag that has been designed to work well when placed on metal can be provided. Sounds good. Thank you, Marti. There was another question. I think this one is also for you. Um, when should I consider using a normal U-code versus a higher security DNA chip, and what's the main difference? Yeah, so the main uh, difference is a security level. Um, if the application requirement is such that um, unique serial number is sufficient and uh, you only want to track this product throughout its uh, lifetime, then you're probably well served with a standard, let's say, could 8 product. If, however, you are dealing with a critical component, a uh, component that uh, has significance on the safety or security of your of the system of the vehicle for example if you want to make sure that uh, there are no um, fake parts entering your supply chain etc 
or if you want to make sure that the parts you are supplying to an OEM, um, that OEM has a way to, to uh, check it and make sure that, that it's really coming from its original source, that's where Yuko DNA comes in because um, what a product such as Yuko DNA offers is not only this uh, unique identification, but also the two very important um, uh, features. And one is uh, tag authentication, so it allows you to securely authenticate that this tag is really an original tag. And also, if you have certain critical data about that product uh, that you want to stay hidden, uh, you don't want it to be um, readable by others, you can also uh, use the privacy protection that that um, tag offers to ensure that uh, the data that you wanted to stay hidden stays hidden and cannot be uh, read out, except again, with um, a crypto authentication on the reader side. So that would be the, those would be the main reasons. Fantastic. Thank you, Marty. And there was one additional question, um, which I think fits very well to the previous one. Um, is there a way to increase security on chip level for road tolling applications? Uh, absolutely, yes. Um, as we tried to mention throughout this application, uh, throughout this presentation, sorry, uh, the focus, of course, has been on uh, automotive manufacturing. But as we have mentioned, um, there are also ways to um, use one tag from uh, beginning of the vehicle manufacturing, then all the way uh, to uh, when the vehicle is um, manufactured and then goes into a uh, supply chain for delivery to the end customer, to the dealer, etc. Um, these tags are normally used for uh, you know, the tracking of this product, uh, of the vehicle as the, as the product. Uh, there are also um, many projects in which additional tags are then placed on the on the vehicle in terms of uh, for the purpose of uh, let's say vehicle uh, registration with, uh, with a government entity and also the use of that um, of, of such um, ad, um, later on added tags on the vehicle for a number of different um, vehicle related applications such as tolling such as car access uh, and and um, fleet management and so forth. In, uh, these, uh, in these applications, security is absolutely um, uh, a key requirement because it is linked to certain uh, privileges, a certain uh, monetary value. Um, and for that uh, reason, uh, a product such as uh, Yuko DNA, which offers this tag authentication and privacy protection uh, is the right product. And we can share it of interest, um, many uh, examples or of where this has been deployed worldwide already. Great, thank you, Marty. Yeah, also to that point, um, also case studies and and other available um, other materials are available on our NXP website. And as Marty mentioned, you can definitely reach out to us, and and we can share more details here as well. Great, thank you, um, Lauri. We have also received some questions um, to um, which are for you. Um, the first one is: Is Avery Dennison offering hard tech? hard techs, um, active RFID tech products, and customized products? Yes, as, as presented earlier, we have hard techs available. We have ELF, HF, and UHF hard techs. We also offer a few um, semi-active products, but not really focused on the active, active products. Customized products are quite often also designed and offered. Also, our products are quite often relabeled, and and we are ready to to deal, design new products for customized applications if we don't have a suitable product available today. Great, thank you, Lauri. There was another question, um, more related to your website. Um, you're showing a lot of different products on your website. So why do you need so many variants of the products? We want to serve many industries and we want to have optimized products for different use cases, like presented today. So to have own portfolio for automotive, for example, for on metal applications, high temperature applications, and highly reliable products for different use cases that requires us to optimize the products for those use cases. If you're interested about our products in general, 
I would also recommend to check our website. We have a great information and most of the data sheets available there. And there's also a product selector tool to find, find the products and select the, the best suitable product for your use cases. Sounds good. So um, there is a question that fits perfectly to what you just said, Lauri. Um, how can uh, someone partner with you or contact you if there are any questions or um, any projects that they would like to engage with you on? So we have a huge field organization to support our partners and customers. So we have a technical customer service available sales teams and also the business development so you can easily contact us through our website or then kind of a send me send me an email and we, i can then guide you to the correct person who can support you sounds good and and this is um also for everyone if there are any questions after the webinar uh, you can definitely reach out to us so we we would like to engage with you of course here Okay, switching again to you, Marti. Um, there was a question on a question on what is our experience with using RFID tags for logistics, um, for example, in warehouses or if they are used on pallets. And is there a benefit of using Rain RFID over barcodes, for example? So definitely, there are many benefits of Rain RFID over barcodes. Um, uh, barcodes in the fir first place, you need a line of sight. Uh, you need the, the barcode, the reader needs to see the barcode in order to even attempt to read it. Uh, barcodes uh, also can get um, damaged uh, easier so that um, uh, then the barcodes cannot be identified, uh, there can be dirt on it, etc. cetera. The, um, the information that they carry uh, cannot be changed once it's printed. It's printed. There, there is no possibility to be um, uh, modified, uh, etc. Whereas, um, contrary to all of this, with uh, Rain RFID, you do not need line of sight. You can store more data, and you can change that data um, uh, in the course of the product's um, life cycle, if you wish to do so. Uh, you can read it in bulk. Uh, the read range is uh, higher. Um, uh, the infrastructure is also generally um, uh, less expensive, etc. So many, uh, many benefits. And in the warehouse application on pallets, absolutely yes. There are many different um, success stories, not only in um, automotive uh, manufacturing or, or in the automotive industry, but in many other industries where RFID is very successfully being used. Uh, exactly in, in for um, warehouse op optimization or um, easier, uh, you know, knowing what did you leave aware, um, easier finding of those objects, and you know, knowing uh, what comes in and what comes out. So doing automated inspection of incoming goods and out, uh, uh, and, and uh, goods going out. Um, there are um, forklift uh, solutions that have integrated uh, RFID readers in them. So when a forklift uh, picks up a pallet um, and the pallet has an RFID tag on it or multiple tags uh, on it, uh, this for forklift already knows uh, what is it uh, carrying and then it also remembers or basically informs the backend system where uh, was this pallet left so that when next time you will search for it, you do not, um, you, you basically know where it is, etc. There are even um, uh, applications where um, drones have been uh, equipped with RFID readers to fly around the warehouse, do inventory, et cetera. So many, many different warehouse applications where definitely RFID brings a lot of benefits. Yeah, fully agree. And, and to sum up, it's definitely a proven technology to be used in different kind of uh, logistics, um, logistic applications. Indeed. Great. There was another question, Marti, on our U-Code product portfolio. Which devices, um, you could 8M or you could 7XM, is suitable for vehicle identification? Um, is there a difference, um, for example, in memory size? So definitely there is a difference in memory size. Um, uh, and if you talk about vehicle identification in terms of um, uh, 
vehicle identification in deploying traffic, meaning in the smart city applications, uh, then I referred back to the previous uh, question, previous discussion that for that type of application, we definitely recommend um, uh, UCO DNA because of its security. Um, if you talk about um, vehicle identification in vehicle supply chain logistics, um, then um, both UCOD 8M uh, and uh, UCOD 7XM uh, can be used. The difference is in, uh, the, uh, in, in the memory. UCOD 8 has um, only 32 bits of uh, user memory, whereas UCOD 7XM has 2K bit user memory, so significantly more. Uh, user memory, and if you uh, follow the uh, follow the hour, the DDA recommendation, um, and you require a minimum of 240-bit uh, EPC, then you could 7XM would be the right product for that application. Sounds good. Thank you, Marty. Um, now we're switching again to you, Lauri. There were some question on your end as well. So. Can you share any names or any real-life projects where Avery Dennis and RFID tags are used in automotive? So there, there were a few success stories uh, mentioned during the presentation, and there are a few success stories also available on our website. So I would say that, that most of the leading OEMs car manufacturers are using our products today. So many of them are using those in the different applications for the production control or for <clears throat> track and trace applications. And I'm happy to share more information with you with the kind of uh, privately, but, but we, we can't, we can't uh, publish all the names at, at this point. And, and once you, once you also kind of uh, be fair with our partners who have designed and developed the applications. So, but there are many, many use cases published on the internet if you search those. Sounds good. Thank you, Lauri. And I think what is important here, if there are more questions or something like that, they can definitely reach out to you for more details, right? Absolutely. Perfect, perfect. There was one question um, regarding your product portfolio. Um, so now that Avery Dennison and SmartTrack is one combined company, um, what do you have in mind for your RFID product portfolio moving forward? So of course we have a great situation with, with huge R&D teams. So we have our RFID teams from the SmartTrack side and from the Avery side to further develop and design the products. So automotive industry is one of our focused areas. And that means that, that we will design the products which will be optimized for automotive use cases. So what I'm expecting is more and more um, optimized products for different use cases which are moving forward. And I'm happy to hear kind of needs and requests from the field that what kind of challenges you see in the future or what kind of special requests you feel that in the future you will face with the applications. So happy to help with those and with, with the new new teams and with the larger company, we, we have resources to serve you. Great, sounds good. Thank you, Lauri. There was one question related to tire tagging. Um, so the question is, is it now in a stage where it will or can be approved by aviation tire manufacturers? So the background for this question was, um, if I get it right, that there are zero metal components allowed only. I, I need to uh, say that I'm not the expert about aviation tires. I know that that our products are used with aviation tires, but I, I don't know all the details about those. So also here, happy to, to help. We have different kind of products also available for tires and with different versions. So if you have special requirements and needs, please contact us. Let's check what are the special requirements for aviation tires, and then we are happy to serve you, serve you to find the best suitable product.
for the application. Fantastic. Thank you, Lauri. Um, there was also one a more technical question related to um, vehicle batteries. So is there a tag that could work on a battery? And if yes, which one would you recommend? There are ways to tag the batteries. That's something what, what we have made a few times already. It depends a little bit the, about the battery type and also the application, what kind of read distance and also the direction for the reading is needed. So what I recommend is normally to apply the product on top of the battery, if possible, because normally you have a small air gap there and, and the product offers a great performance there. If that the performance or kind of the top of the battery location is not possible, then I normally recommend to use either flag tag or all metal products to, to get the performance. But batteries are always a little bit special and there are lots of variation with the batteries. So I would recommend to contact our technical customer service. They are experts to qualify and test different products for your pro components. So for example, here we have 700 or 800 different products available, which can be which can be tested and which could be suitable for you. So our field application managers are expert to support you to find the best suitable product for your component. Thank you, Lauri. We have time uh, for one more question, and I think this one goes to you, Marti. Um, it's related to the performance of our UCOD DNA IC during a road tolling or e toll application. So for example, what kind of maximum speed can the car um, go through or what is the response time with the reader? Um, do you have any insights that you could share with us? Uh, yes, of course. Um, I will refer to uh, the most recent and most advanced test which we have done uh, last year uh, with some of our partners at um, a Saxon ring in Germany, which is a racetrack uh, where we have tested uh, our UCO DNA in a, a number of different tag types, from windshield labels to headlamp tags to even embedded component in uh, license plates. And uh, we achieved uh, 220 kilometers per hour um, for both identification and authentication. Uh, keep in mind that uh, to identify a tag, meaning to only read its um, unique number, it's relatively easy to do and uh, it can be done very fast. To run crypto authentication with the challenges and responses um, and the computation that is required, of course, takes more time and it's uh, more difficult to do. Uh, however, as I said, uh, with uh, the partners that we work with, their reader infrastructure and our UCO DNA implementation, we're able to achieve this identification as well as authentication. Uh, at speeds of about 220 kilometers an hour, which is basically remarkable. Uh, there are hardly uh, any traffic on any highway going at that speed. Uh, and normally, uh, even when you talk about um, uh, toll plazas in free, free flow environments, um, there are speed limitations at you know, 100, 120 or so. Uh, so we have also a, a fairly wide uh, safety margin and feel very confident that um, free flow applications um, work very well with Yukonini. Perfect. Thank you, Marty, for the explanation here in this case. We are right up on and maybe time. Just, just, yes, sorry, please just, go just ahead. Just to add, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just to wrap this up, we did not only test this at a, a control environment, at, at a racetrack. Of course, this has been tested in real applications and there are real projects um, uh, out there in the field uh, globally in which this is um, already now used in, in real life. Sounds good. Thank you, Marti. So we are right up on time with our webinar. Um, first of all, thank you, Marti and Lauri, for your presentations and taking time to answer all our questions. We have received 
more questions during the presentation. So just that you know, we will, of course, follow up with you after the webinar um, to give you an answer. And as mentioned before, um, please contact me. You should have my email address in your inbox as I'm the organizer of the webinar. If you have any further questions, and I will, of course, direct you to the right person um, to ensure that um, you get a follow up from our side as well. With that, um, I would like to thank you all for joining us um, today for our webinar about uh, smarter vehicle manufacturing. I wish you a great day and have a look um, out in your inbox. In two days, you will receive a link to the recording. Thank you and goodbye.